Okay, so this is a good question about how to approach improving range of motion for dancers, gymnasts. So I think a lot of this comes down to uh, injury history as always. We start with the story of the patient and where is there potentially a perceived threat present? So again, is there anything in their history that's going to maybe decrease the brain's confidence in loading that tissue? That would be the first thing that I would go to. Then what we want to do is look at the movements that they want to get into. And then from there, all we do is we basically go, right, which tissues have to shorten, which tissues have to lengthen. And then from there, it's a case of either showing the nervous system it's safe to tolerate load, or we just basically put them in these positions and we can use the respiratory system as well to actually desensitize the person's um, perception of these positions. So that there's a whole host of options that you have to do, but the most important thing for me is we have to clear up any perceived threats present or any inability to tolerate load. So again, I don't think it's as simple as um, it's either a mobility or a stability issue. I think it's always a combination of both of those. Okay, so we were actually just videoing content um, for this for module nine of the mentorship uh, just five minutes ago. So this is quite fresh. So again, um, uh, FAI hip impingement, another very interesting one. We'll have to have a very good understanding of what is driving this. So obviously when we bring the hip into flexion, there's a lot of tissues that have to um, have an ability to, to let go, to relax, to lengthen. There's some tissues that are gonna have to shorten. So the interesting thing about this is we can change the pelvis position. So how the pelvis um, is sitting in relation to the femur, okay? very, very easy by manipulating uh, how the rib cage is moving, okay? So it's not just as simple as, as, and what I used to initially was, let's get a mulligan belt and let's distract the hip and show we'd get a little bit of a short-term change in hip range of motion. A much better, much smarter approach now for me is, right, let's see what's um, the issue here. Is it maybe the rib cage and the pelvis are lacking mobility and, why is that? Okay, is it a diaphragm? Is it a pelvic floor contributing to that? Is it um, something completely different? Has the person got um, a bang in the ribs in the past? Um, is there some emotional stressors there? And again, once we find out why, then we go about restoring uh, the ability to lengthen these tissues and tolerate load, okay? And tolerating load for someone with um, that may have emotional drivers, maybe putting them in scenarios and situations in environments that stress them, and force them to be able to tolerate these environments with a normal respiratory um, rate, a normal breathing pattern, whatever that looks like, okay? So for me with uh, FAI, I'm looking a lot of what's happening at the pelvis, at the rib cage. I'm looking a lot of what's happening at a Dr. Magnus. I'm looking a lot at all the other tissues that are contributing to that movement of hip flexion, hip internal rotation, and again, specifically to the person we're going to get a lot of clues in a subjective assessment so it's not just a case of do this this and this we have to understand your story and your injury history